guys, welcome back to my channel, Everyday Homeschooler, where we chat about education, homemaking, and everyday life. Today I'm going to be doing a review and flip through of Gather Round Homeschool Curriculum. And I just want to put out a disclaimer here to start. I am in no way affiliated with Gather Round. I'm not being sponsored. No one is paying me to say anything. These are my own genuine opinions about the curriculum after using it for the last two months. Okay, so to begin, I'm just going to do a quick overview of what Gather Round is. It is a brand new homeschool curriculum that just hit the market in fall of 2019. It was created and written by Rebecca Spooner of Homeschool On, and it is an all-in-one unit study style curriculum. It covers all of the subjects except for math, and it ranges from preschool all the way through high school. Each unit is based on a theme. Examples would be space or oceans or maybe Europe and contains 20 lessons that you can use four to five days per week with your family. So each unit, if you purchase the full bundle, is gonna come with a teacher's guide. It's also going to come with access to all six of the student levels. These are not necessarily grade level based. However, they, I'm just gonna read right off of the site, Pre-reader is for four to five year olds. Early reader is for six to eight year olds. Early elementary is for eight to 10. Upper elementary, 10 to 12. Middle school, 12 to 15. And then high school for 15 to 18 year olds. So you will have access to all of those student pages. Okay, so let's talk about cost. I know this is a really big subject. So there are two camps when you're thinking about this curriculum. If you are going to be in the digital camp where you're going to download everything yourself, or if you are going to order it and have Rebecca print and ship it to you at your home. Now, if you are going to have her print and ship everything, you need to be planning on around $30 per student book per unit. So let's say you have four children. You That's gonna add up pretty quickly and you may have $120 plus shipping from Canada. Um, now there's the digital camp. The digital camp is where they send you an email and you have a download link where you are able to download all of the information yourself at home. Now, if you're in the digital camp, like we are in our house, um, that costs $49. That then falls into two new categories. Are you going to print everything yourself at home or are you going to utilize a copy store or Barnes and Noble or some type of office supply store to print all of the pages for you and then possibly bind them? That can also add some cost. Another option that I have seen people do is that they utilize tablets or iPads with their children and allow them to use the curriculum digitally. Okay, so now we're gonna head on over and just do a quick flip through of the curriculum so you can see it up close. One. Lesson one covers an introduction to space. At the beginning of every lesson in the teacher's guide, it gives you a day of the glance and it goes through and it tells you all of the things that your kids will be covering that day. From there, you just read the lesson script aloud um, and I always show my kids all of the pictures and illustrations that are in the teacher's guide. It goes through and it, you read about what space, was space always there? What is it? It gives you bold words that you could use as vocabulary words with older children. There's also sometimes um, what they call an activity break put in here. These are optional, but I find most of them don't take very long and my kids really enjoy. So just moving on, it just continues to go through and give you different types of astronomy and astronomers and then Here's another page about the story of the telescope and the history of astronomy. And then lastly, here is a what if you were an astronomer? And this is just a real quick paragraph about a day in the life of an astronomer. This is the end of the lesson. It gives you all of the sources that they used for the information, and then it gives your students the assignment to go do work in their notebook. There's also an extension activity suggestion. 
Um, this one is about maybe starting to research a type of solar system model that you would want to build um, as a family as you finish the rest of the unit. Okay, and then here is just a quick glance into a couple of student pages from lesson one in the space unit. I wanted to give you a side-by-side -side comparison. My daughter who is in kindergarten does a combination of pre-reader pages and early reader pages. And then my fifth and sixth graders, they both do upper elementary pages. So what we start off with is while I'm reading the teacher guide, my kindergartner will work on the coloring page that is provided that day, while my upper elementary kids work on this notebooking page for science. And they're just going through and filling out notes that were in the reading as I read. And then afterwards, they can take my teacher's guide and go back through and add anything they missed. Next, my kindergartner will just do some of the pre-reader phonics practice. She's working on the letter I and the sound identifications that go with that. Meanwhile, my two older kiddos are gonna work on a worksheet that has to do with economics. Moving on, my kindergartner continues with some phonics practice by doing some sight word identification. Again, this, the sight word number one is put into a space theme and she has to color all of the stars that have the number one written in it. Meanwhile, my two older kids work on a copy work of a Bible verse and then they do a little study real quickly about the difference between the word breath and breathe. Then I pulled this sheet from the early reader for my kindergartner um, to go along with the map work that my two upper elementary kids are doing. Um, because we talked about the history of the telescope, we talk about the Netherlands and Italy. So for my kindergartner, it's already labeled on the map and we just identify where those are and color them. For my older kids, it works on directions of a compass. They have to find them looking at their map, their own map, they have to find the countries on their own and label them and color them and then answer just a few basic geography questions. The last page for the day is an art project where we talk about Vincent van Gogh. For my early reader they are doing a coloring page of this starry night while the upper elementary kids are asked to create their own version of this star of the starry night and so instead of doing it in the box and the paper my daughter wanted to do hers in her art notebook on a little bit thicker of paper so she copied and made her own version of the starry night okay so now that you've seen the curriculum up close and personal i'm sure you're asking what does this look like in practice um, i know a lot of families do it a lot of different ways i can just tell you how we utilize it in our home what we do is typically it's after breakfast i tell my children that it's group time so everybody goes and grabs their notebooks and a pencil my youngest she goes ahead and grabs some crayons i grab my teacher's guide and we all sit down and gather around the table and i read aloud from the teacher's guide this takes me about 20 minutes and while I read my youngest colors her coloring page and maybe flips through some of the books that I reserve from the library from the suggested reading list um, just to give her something hands-on to do while she's listening. My two olders uh, immediately start working on their new notebooking page which is typically the first page in the student pages lesson and they just sit and take notes while I read to them. Now Sometimes this takes us 20 minutes, sometimes it takes us closer to a half an hour, just depending on how our discussion goes, whether we go down any rabbit trails, whether or not we need to get out the computer and do a little bit further research on a topic or guide. Then immediately after that, my two olders start independently working on their student notebooking pages, while I will side by side sit down with my youngest and we will go through her notebooking pages. She definitely needs me to stay close by to help her with instructions and to just stay on task. Uh, my two older kids can do most of their work completely independently, as long as I'm around just to maybe answer a question or help them research something. It takes my youngest uh, about 15 to 20 minutes to finish all of her notebooking pages. And when she is done, her and I grab, again, some of those suggested books um, from the list in the curriculum, and we'll head to the couch and start reading. In the meantime, that gives my older two kids some time to finish up their notebooking pages. Um, it normally takes my upper elementary kids about an hour to finish all of their notebooking pages for the day. 
So all in all, we are able to get through Gather Round curriculum in about two hours every single day, start to finish. Um, and I'm just gonna read right off the site um, in case you're curious about other age groups. Um, according to their site, they say that it will take a middle schooler between two and two and a half hours and a high school closer to three hours. Okay, so let's just talk about my takeaways. There are definitely some really big pros and some cons with this curriculum. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the pros. First of all, I feel like this has brought the fun back to our home school. I personally, as mama, am enjoying school every day. I am learning alongside of my kids and I am excited to see what new thing we're going to learn about. That attitude has been contagious and just doing some of the fun projects and researching new things has just brought fun to our school days. Another pro is that it has just encouraged an atmosphere of family unity. We are all studying the same thing, granted at our own levels, but everyone is on the same page learning the same thing. It definitely has that one room schoolhouse feel. Another benefit is that each unit is only four to five weeks long. I actually am able to stretch mine almost to six because we only do it three to four days a week. And to me, that just works out really well because right around the time, about that five to six week mark, when my kids are starting to get bored, it's time to change and to start a new unit. And so it's almost like starting the first day of school all over again. And so just being able to consistently change things up and keep things fresh has brought excitement to our school days. Okay, so let's talk about some of the cons. Um, for one thing, I feel like the cost can be a little bit intimidating, um, as well as if you are doing the digital, it is a lot, a good bit of work to print everything and organize everything for each unit. That's one of the reasons why I stretch each unit six weeks out. It gives me a few days of buffer time to prepare and get ready for our next unit. The other con that I have that I kind of mentioned earlier in the video is that my daughter who is six kind of falls in between two levels. She is a little bit advanced for the pre-reader because she does have some reading skills. However, the early reading pages require a lot more of my assistance to help her with and she can't quite do independently. So for me, I end up pulling pages from each, which again is more work for me to organize and more a little bit more cost in my printing. Um, as much as that's a con, I would also say it's a pro. I am able to very much individualize her education and pick the pages that I think will be most engaging and that will be the most challenging for her and meet her where she is at this little in-between stage. Okay, so to wrap things up, if you cannot tell, I am definitely a fan of this curriculum. It has been a game changer in our homeschool, especially since I had my fifth little one this fall. Um, I definitely think we will continue to use the curriculum at least for the rest of this year, if not into next. Um, if you are considering using the curriculum, I would recommend for you to head on over to Gather Round's site. They have free samples of the lessons that you can print out and try it for a day in your home. See what your kids think of it, see what you think of it, and you can try it without any strings attached, without any risk or cost. Okay guys, well I think that pretty well wraps things up. If you enjoyed this video, please like it below. And if if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. I will be doing many more videos about education, homemaking, and everyday life.